got so much freaking snow yesterday. Oh my goodness. My dogs do not care. Look at them. <laughs> it was a pretty mild winter up until yesterday. I was honestly pretty concerned at the fact that we got all the way to the end of January and hardly got any snow at all. And it was about time. Hot chocolate's done. Got my hot chocolate and I'm gonna head back to my room so we can chat. Hello, can I help you? Excuse me. Hot chocolate is so delightful during the winter time. I just don't have marshmallows, which I'm kind of upset about, but it's fine. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. The topics that I'm going to be talking about mostly are makeup artist focused since I am a makeup artist myself, specifically a bridal makeup artist. So I'm going to be talking about the topics such as how to stay busy during slow season, how to keep yourself motivated and staying busy. I'm also going to talk about the dreaded comparison game that all of us play to other artists, which is a huge topic that I've covered on here before. For. And also I'm going to be talking about going forward with my business, how I've decided to change my mindset going into this year. I kind of covered a little bit of this on the last video. So definitely go ahead and check that out. I'll link it up above if you guys have not seen the last Real Talk series. All right, let's get started with the prep first. I've been recently loving going in with a thermal water before I start. It kind of just wakes me up in the morning. This is the La Roche-Posay Thermal Spring Water. And this is for sensitive skin specifically. Seriously the best. Um, La Roche-Posay makes really, really good stuff. So it is, uh, the skincare brand called Vici, I think. Both of them are really, really good brands, especially for people who want to stick to a budget, but also want really high quality things too. And it's a really fine mist too, so it's not like you're just drenching your face. I do put on quite a bit just because I do like to have that hydration. During this winter time, it has gotten so, so dry and I have been loving all of the hydrating products recently. Then the next prep step I'm going in with is the Peach and Lily Lazy Day All Day Moisture Pads. These things have been a godsend, guys. These are amazing. I have been using them since my 25 Days of Kitmas series. I used them on my skin prep video. First of all, they smell delightful. Pomegranate is the main smell, but it doesn't have any artificial fragrances. It's just the smell that's derived from the ingredients that they use inside of here. Peach and Lily, I believe, is a Korean skincare brand and Koreans definitely know how to do their skincare. There is 60 biodegradable pads in here. The front side that you use on your face has these little tiny raised bumps on here. So they will lightly exfoliate your face as you're going in with this. This is kind of like your toner, your moisturizer, your serum, everything kind of in one shot. The first thing I want to talk about is how to be motivated or what to do during slow season. This is specifically targeting bridal makeup artists. Bridal season usually happens between about April to October, I wanna say. I live in the Midwest, so we do have snow seasons, of course. So a lot of the times brides around here will not get married in those months and they pretty much just start up in April. During those times though, a lot of bridal makeup artists will heavily struggle with either getting jobs or getting income during that time. Weddings are something that can make you a massive amount of income, especially if weddings are very popular around you. I, of course, told you guys that I live in the Midwest, specifically in Indiana, so I'm not in an area that there's like film and television or there's like high editorial photo shoots going on. So unless you work weddings in the Midwest, there's really not a lot of other sources of income that you can have as a makeup artist, unfortunately. But with that being said though, since there isn't very many weddings going on, it's like, what the hell do you do? So the biggest suggestion that I have is when you are in your peak bridal season, save up as much much money as you can. It's very, very tempting when you get a huge influx of weddings and a huge influx of income that you just kind of want to spend all that money and just treat yourself, you know? That's not exactly the mindset that you should have. You should be living within the same budget that you have throughout the winter months as you do in the summer months. Like your budget should be the same every single time and your spending habits should be the same. That way you can put all the excess money that you're making into a savings account and then your savings will be your fallback just in case you need to dip from it. So that's pretty much what I would highly suggest. A lot of this industry is just managing your money really well. I did make a whole entire video over how much I make as a makeup artist and I did not hold anything back. Like I seriously went over the number figures. So go ahead and check out that video if you guys are starting as a makeup artist or maybe you're just curious about what I personally make as a makeup artist. It's not enough to survive off of solely, I will let you know. So that's why I have other streams of income. Majority of people around here have that Midwest mentality where they just wanna pay as little as possible. There's two different Facebook groups that I'm a part of. So there's one that's like Fort Wayne brides and then one that says Fort Wayne weddings or Fort Wayne wedding vendors or something like that. Nobody is looking for high quality people 
or the best people. They are looking for the most affordable or the cheapest people. Brides will go on there and be like, hey, I'm looking for a really affordable makeup artist. I'm looking for a really cheap makeup artist that does really good work. That's kind of not possible in our industry. And it's hard around here to make people realize the actual value of makeup artists. So it's kind of hard to kind of get that clientele sometimes. But now again, I've gotten to the point where there is people out there that 10% of my area pretty much that really doesn't mind paying for stuff. And brides really do need to realize that you will pay more automatically for a person's skill set than the years of experience that they've had. Like you will not be getting a person that's very, very good for like $50. It's not gonna happen. But anyways, I'm done with that tangent. I'm gonna go on to my next product here. I recently picked up this moisturizer. I did get this suggestion off of another YouTuber that I follow. Her name is Jordan Lipscomb. I think she lives somewhere in the UK, but I don't exactly know which country it is. This was in her 2022 favorites video. Yep, fab. Hyaluronic Fix Hybrid Gel Cream. It looks like this. And guys, this is actually like only $25, I think. It's not very expensive. I've never personally tried any of Nip Fab's products before, but she absolutely raved about this moisturizer and she's really good at selling stuff because I went on Ulta's website and like bought it the next day. If you guys didn't see one of my videos where I decluttered old and expired makeup because I broke out an allergic reaction, I had such dry, dry, flaky skin for probably a week after that reaction happened and I needed something to heavily hydrate me. So that is the point when I picked up this guy and guys, this thing saved my skin. I'm not even exaggerating. So I just got this thing probably about a month ago. I don't know if you can see because the whole entire thing's white, but there's probably a good inch or so that is missing from the top of here because I've been using it every single day, morning and night. It's a cream, but it also feels like a gel too. And I've never ever felt anything with this texture. I think that the closest moisturizer, I would say as far as texture to this would probably be the Belief Aqua Balm. I do have that one in my makeup kit, but that definitely is more of a gel. This one is a little bit heavier than that one in texture. You can see it's not very runny or anything, but it just blends near skin so freaking nicely. Again, when I was going through that allergic reaction and I had dry patches all over my cheeks, like this probably solved it in the matter of three days after I got it. It was a miracle. So I will highly recommend this to like anybody who asks for like a great moisturizer because it just makes your skin feel so, so soft. So I was talking about people not seeing the value in makeup artists. So with that being said, around here in the Midwest, people really don't want to spend a lot on makeup makeup artists, especially in the price range that I'm at because I'm a little bit above the average. People rarely will hire makeup artists for anything else except for weddings just because they're like, well, I can do it myself. I don't want to pay like $80, $90 for somebody to do my makeup. I'll see makeup artists on Instagram sometimes that are like, hey, I just did a going out makeup look for somebody who's just having a girl's night or or I did somebody's makeup for New Year's Eve or I did somebody's makeup for Valentine's Day. It's random events like that that people just hire makeup artists for, but it doesn't really happen that much around here. To be totally honest, this year I have not really done anything. I didn't have a singular job all throughout January. I thought I was going to have a couple of photo shoots and then those photo shoot clients ended up rescheduling. And so I was pretty much left without any income whatsoever. I usually spend the majority of my money on supplies for my makeup kit, but if I'm not working, I don't need to spend that money. The only expenses that I would really need to contribute to during the month of January or the months that I don't have any jobs is pretty much just my own personal expenses. And then also I pay quarterly taxes, pay like $700, I think like every quarter because of you guys. <laughs> I make enough money off of YouTube to support that. And then I also made enough money every single week from my job that I work. So I was able to support myself without having to do like anything extra. And I didn't have to pull from my savings account at all. You won't always be busy 24 seven as a makeup artist. So developing another source of income is really nice. Just in terms of like other things you can do. I've seen a lot of makeup artists like sell digital documents. So like I sell business templates for instance, which are still available by the way. I sell bridal contract templates. I sell accounting templates, which is good this time of year for taxes. And then I also sell my consultation templates that I use to fill out the products that I use on people during bridal trials, bridal previews, whatever you want to call them. People also have sold makeup artist courses. If you feel like you have enough of a following or enough of an audience to be able to sell makeup artist courses to other makeup artists, then that would be a good thing too. You can also try doing like one-on-one -on -one lessons through like Zoom calls or something with normal paying clients. Other things you can do is probably selling like physical products. So if you maybe have like your own cosmetics line or something, like you can do private label cosmetics. And then of course you can always do like social media stuff. So you can work toward being like a paid influencer through like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, etc. You can get paid by all those platforms. And then if you want to be adventurous, you can get like a part-time job like 
I do. It's a bookkeeping position at an electric company, which does pay like pretty good for what it is. So it does support me too. I of course also make commissions off of affiliate links that you guys click on. Like if you guys make a purchase with any of the products that I have, I'll make like a very, very small commission, but it does really help me out to support the channel and also support me as an individual so I can make better content for you guys. That's probably the thing that I highly, highly recommend. Don't just like put all your eggs in one basket because if that one basket fails, you're going to lose all your income. So that's why I don't recommend that you just rely on being a makeup artist because it's not a stable source of income. I'm going to go on to my next product here, which is this Merit Beauty Tinted Brow Gel. This is the Brow 1980 and this is in the shade Brown. And I'm just going to use this to comb through my brows. I mentioned this in my last video because I did a whole entire thing over Merit Beauty. I don't really see a huge difference in the way that my brows look with brow gels just because my brows are microbladed, but it's been a couple of years now since I actually got these done. So um, I usually like to fill in a little bit. As far as being bored during that time, because boredom does heavily sink in, especially if you don't have any jobs and you do this full time and you're just sitting around and doing nothing. Guys, you do not know the amount of times I've woken up on Saturdays and feel like I'm missing a wedding or something. You have weddings almost every single weekend and every single day of that weekend. So to not have weddings to get up for on Saturdays, it's just throwing off my entire balance of life pretty much. But anyways, during slow seasons when you're not busy like that, you can either start getting kind of like upset or depressed or think you're doing something wrong because you're not always going to have clients during that time. And it is nothing that you're doing wrong. Everybody and I mean everybody, has these slow seasons. Even the busiest, most popular makeup artists will have lulls, especially if they are a bridal makeup artist and that's what they specialize in. The only reason they probably have content is because they're faking it and it's making it look like they have clients all the time in their chair, but they really do not. Oh, I forgot to announce what I'm using. So I usually use concealers for eyeshadow primers. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Light Illuminating Smoothing Concealer. It has a little bit of luminosity to it and I have mine in the shade Cafe LA. I've been been recently trying this guy and I've really loved the luminosity. It's hidden dark circles a lot better than like flat matte concealers. And then um, I'm just gonna blend it out with a brush really quickly. I've actually recently been in love with all the Beauty Bay palettes and they're so affordable for the quality of them. I'm taking the 16 color neutrals palette, which looks like this. And then if you open it, it does come with a mirror. And then all of these pretty like neutral colors come inside of it. So I think I'm gonna create more of a bronzy kind of look. So I think I'm gonna take this shade. Oh yeah. And these eyeshadows are so, so pigmented. Like look at that. The only bad thing about these is that you do get quite a bit of fallout, so I probably will have to clean up afterwards. What I was saying though is that you shouldn't really get bogged down comparing yourself to other people because those other people are pretty much just faking their content. A lot of the times people will accumulate like a whole bunch of client photos and stuff like when they're busy and just like don't have time to post it during their busy seasons. So they'll be posting a lot of like old content. I've been using this time to like reach out to the photographers that have been my bride's photographers throughout like all of last year pretty much. And then just posting like all of those wedding photos. The other thing that you guys can do is hosting model calls. So I just uploaded a vlog not too long ago where I uploaded how I ran my model call and what happens with it. I got an Instagram message not too long ago from a person that's like, I really want to run a model call, but I don't know how to do it because I don't have that big of a following. And you really don't have to have that big of a following to do it. When I first got started with makeup artistry, I just advertised it on my own personal Facebook page. So the models that I had in my chair were people that I already knew. With model calls, as far as being a makeup artist, they are usually completely for free. To me, that person heavily is helping me out like creating content and getting the stuff that I need to promote my business so I don't charge them anything. So then they'll advertise my work on their own personal pages, which also exposes my work to a whole different audience, which is all of their followers and all of their friends. Um, and then I also get social media content as well. So I filmed YouTube tutorials for you guys and also simultaneously produce Instagram content too. It gives you content for the times when you're slow. It makes you look like you're busy without actually being busy. Just know that people are doing the exact same thing that you are. Like these people are not busy all the time guys. They're just busy because they fake being busy and you guys might think okay well that's kind of unfair because why would you give in to doing that? But at the same time as a makeup artist if you don't act like you're busy and post like you're busy people aren't going to want to hire you. So it's just kind of the name of the game to be totally honest but just know not everybody is actually as busy as they seem. I don't know if I'm liking how this is turning out. Hold on. <coughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't like the way this is turning out. I think I'm gonna do like my wing liner kind of effect um, that I usually do. So I'm gonna completely take off what I have and then we're gonna start over. Oh, I forgot to mention the other thing that you can do, you can do styled shoots with other vendors. So if you are a bridal makeup artist, for instance, 
you would get together with a whole bunch of wedding vendors in your area. Like I have one that's planned for the end of January. You usually get asked by other vendors to do this. Like I got asked by this wedding photographer, but you can also host one yourself. It just takes a little bit more coordination. All these wedding vendors come together. You all work completely for free, but you are gaining connections with vendors that you may not have come in contact with before. You guys all exchange names, business cards, websites, Instagram handles, etc. Then the photographer disperses pretty much all the photos that they took um, for the styled shoot. You guys all tag each other and stuff. And then you now have exposure to like eight other vendors audiences that you didn't have exposure to before. It'll give you something to do during slow seasons, but then you're also kind of helping out your business in that way too. So yeah, that's pretty much what um, I do during slow seasons overall and how you can kind of like stay motivated as being a makeup artist during those slow seasons. All right, I'm gonna go in with the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. I figured out this is almost an exact dupe for the Milk Kush Mascara that everybody likes. It has a really grippy wand. It has one of those like thicker hourglass shaped ones, kind of like the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascaras. But this is the only mascara recently that actually has done something for the length of my lashes because guys, I have the tiniest freaking lashes you guys have ever seen. Like you probably cannot even hardly see that. So I'm really picky about mascara and this is the one mascara that I really liked. And to be totally honest, I don't even think I'm gonna apply false lashes. I really don't even feel like doing it. <laughs> I recently got the new Elf Power Grit Primer with the 4% Niacinamide. It's supposed to be a lot more hydrating than the regular Power Grit Primer. I do have the other one, by the way, and I really like it a lot. It's a dupe for the Milk Hydro Grit Primer. Okay, my lips are really dry, so I'm going in with one of my favorite lip balms. This is the Fresh Sugar Lip Balm in the shade Caramel. Shade? Scent? I don't know. Look at how much I've used this thing. It is so good. The one thing I like about it is the smell. Like the caramel one specifically smells so delightful. I'm almost hitting pan on this and I'm gonna definitely repurchase it because it's really good. And the thing that I like about this is that it's not one of those lip balms that you feel like you have to constantly keep reapplying because the hydration doesn't stay there. And the way that the texture is, it's just like very silky smooth. So it does actually make a difference in your lips. It kind of slowly absorbs throughout the day. So you just don't have to keep reapplying it. The next product that's hyped up is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. I got mine in the shade Fair Light. This actually doesn't look super light on my skin. I don't think e.l.f. went light enough with these, especially if people are trying to use them as highlighters. I love the huge doe foot that they have. It's kind of like the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I'm actually going to use this all over as a foundation. I haven't recently been liking using foundations on my skin, so I have just been using this guy or something similar to it, like even a concealer all over my face. It's giving me a more natural kind of appearance, and then I'm just taking a denser brush and just blending it in. Since this isn't super opaque in itself, and it just adds a little bit of luminosity. I really don't think that it's too light for my skin. So I've been using this and then taking a concealer and just concealing like down the middle of my face so I can kind of like maintain that glow. I did used to own the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter and that's what this is supposed to be a dupe for. And guys, it performs the exact same way, if not better. Like I kind of almost like this a little bit better. And for the price, you just can't beat it. I think this thing's like maybe like $10. Elf's been doing things. Like Elf has really been putting themselves out there this year and finding better alternatives for the high-end stuff, which is really insane considering the price point. I look really shiny on camera. It's not that intense in person, just to let you know. <laughs> really quickly going to go back in this Born This Way light reflecting concealer, which also has a luminosity to it, so I might look like the Tin Man after this. As you can tell after I went in with that concealer, even though it is luminous too, it did kind of like minimize the look of the shininess. So this is the new gel contour from KBD. Looks like this. I didn't really fall in with the hype for a while, um, but I had to try it. I have the shade light medium neutral 70 and I was bit between this and the medium but I don't think I'm dark enough for the next one. <laughs> So this comes out in like a large applicator too. This is like the most lightweight feeling bronzer contour that I've ever felt. It has a really interesting texture. So what I've been doing is I've been doing like these little dots on my face and then I'll blend it out with a dense brush. So I'm going in with like the same brush again. And this is a Morphe brush, by the way. It's the Morphe M536 brush. Instead of using creams in my kit, since they are a little bit heavier, I think I might start using these. They have kind of a cooling effect to them. And as you can see, like they just blend it out super Super easily and you can tell a difference like you can tell the difference between like this one and then this side like has nothing on it look at how natural that looks it's a gel like it's actually a physical gel formulation I just like the fact that you can build it up on itself though and like it doesn't 
look too heavy or too dark or anything. And it looks like the most natural contour color too. Like the contour colors that I was swatching in stores at least when I was trying to debate which color I should get. All of them look super natural. Yeah, just look at how my face looks though. I'm having good skin day anyways, but that just like amplified it. All right, then next I'm going in with the Merit Beauty Cheek Color which is the Flush Balm. This is in the shade Cheeky. This is what the color looks like. And I love Merit Beauty's blushes. Like they're just nice like cream blushes. You can apply them on directly if you want to. I'm taking the same brush. It's like seriously a multi-purpose brush. That's why I like bullet brushes like this. So I'm just gonna pick it up on my brush and then I'm just gonna tap it on here. The highlighter that I'm going in with is a liquid highlighter. This one's from Rare Beauty. I just got it not too long ago. So this is the Rare Beauty liquid highlighter and I kind of like this light pink shade. This is in the shade Mesmerize. And this one I am going to apply directly to my face and the high points. And I'm just gonna do two to start out with because I don't know how luminous this is actually going to be. And again, same brush. I swatched it in stores and this is a really, really pretty color. It's deep enough on my skin tone that it doesn't heavily reflect. I didn't really need to use highlighter because obviously my face is shiny enough, but I'm gonna mattify everything with this Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. Uh, this is in the shade light. And then I'm going in with a little brush. Yeah, as you can see though, it's just kind of like mattifying this area so it just doesn't look so shiny. Next topic that I wanted to talk about while I'm powdering my face because this might take a little bit. I kind of wanted to branch off of the playing the comparison game to something else. Um, so a lot of people, especially when they're in the bridal makeup industry or just like when they're a makeup artist in general, you always are comparing yourself to other people as far as like how many clients you get every single year. And I personally like to calculate how many weddings that I have every single year, but I feel like that's been a terrible habit that I've had. Why do we let the number of weddings or the number of clients that we have designate our success level? Like, why do we do that? A lot of people think that the more clients that you have, the more money you're going to be making and business is growing because you have more clients. That may be true, but at the same time though, you're also not taking into account how much you're charging for those services too. Okay, take my business for example. 2019 is when I initially launched my freelance business. At that point in time, I charged like maybe $75 per person and that wasn't a lot. I even charged the same amount for brides as I do for bridesmaids. So that was pretty much what it was. So with that being said, I had 10 weddings or something that first year. Going forward into 2020, I got super upset with myself at that point in time. I only had five more weddings for a total of 15 weddings in that 2020 year. Why did I not get more clients? Like why did I only go up five clients from 2019? Like I don't get it but guys, I didn't take into account the thing in the world happened that year. Like there wasn't as many weddings. There wasn't as many people getting married that year. People couldn't have as many bridesmaids that year too because there was limitations on how many people you could have in one room. And I didn't take that into account when I was comparing myself with the previous year. So again, you always need to account every single factor that could have affected why your numbers weren't the way that they were supposed to be or the way that you wanted them to be. Really quickly, before I move on to that topic, I'm gonna go in with a powder bronzer. This is gonna warm up the complexion a little bit. I'm going in with the Makeup Revolution Bronzer Reloaded. I went over this in my dupes video and I've been loving this thing. It's a baked bronzer. So I'm gonna go in with a loose powder brush. This is one of the Jessup ones. That's what all these white handle brushes are. They come in a 14 piece set and I'm just gonna sweep it over top of that contour. You also don't need to go in super heavy handed with this thing cause it lays out a ton of pigment, but I am like thoroughly impressed with this. And then after this, I'm just gonna go in with a blush on top because I did kind of lose some of the pigmentation from the liquid. I'm going in with the Hourglass Luminous Flush Blush. I did take this out of my makeup kit. Like I don't use these in my makeup kit anymore because I ended up replacing them with the NARS blushes. I felt like those had a little bit more of a pigmentation to them. But for myself, I really do like these Hourglass blushes. Such a pretty pink color. I don't understand why people haven't actually hyped up this blush yet. Like everybody's all over the pink blush trend. Look at how awesome that is. Just looks really nice. I'm just gonna set my face really quickly before I go on to lips with the Milani Make It Last Setting Spray. You need to work on the sprayer. I feel like it douses your face. So anyways, what I was saying though, is that I wasn't really taking into account the 2020 world happenings. So then when I went into 2021, I heavily saw like a huge influx of weddings and the amount of clients that I was getting. Cause of course people were rescheduling from 2020 and then moving on to 2021. I pretty much tripled the amount of weddings that I had. Like I went from 15 weddings in 2020 to 38 
in 2021. So when I went into 2022, I was looking at the number of weddings that I had and I only had like 42 weddings total. With that in mind, my income only went up about like maybe two or $3,000 from the previous year. And it kind of upset me because I kind of thought that 2022 would be like the year for me to like double my revenue, double the amount of clients that I had. So why did I only get like four more weddings? I think it was maybe in December when I figured this out and I got really upset. I mean, it was actually like a debilitating thing. I just almost felt like, why am I doing this career if I'm not gonna see a change in my business like that, you know? I was looking at all the factors that could have contributed into why I didn't make the sales that I wanted to and why I didn't get the amount of clients that I thought I would get. And here's what I figured out. I didn't get as many clients because I was charging more, which means that not as many people are going to book me at those rates. As you increase your prices throughout the years, you are basically lessening the population or the group that will pay for those prices. But in turn, you're also making more money because you're charging more for your services. You don't need as many people as you had before because you're making more money off of them. And then also I did figure out that I didn't really take any weddings by myself or at least not that many that were over eight people. So if I had a bridal party that was over eight people last year, I automatically hired in another artist. I don't personally charge an additional artist fee, even though I probably should, but that's not like super common around here because a lot of times you're competing with like bridal teams. So if they have teams of people, like they automatically bring in another person and it's not any extra. So that's why brides in my area aren't used to paying an additional artist fee like they are in other areas. So if you charge like $100 extra for a person, they're not probably gonna pay that. Since people are having such a large bridal parties, I have had to almost find an additional artist on every single bride. With that being said, that pretty much cuts the amount of people that I'm doing for a bridal party in half because I like to designate half of them to the other artists and then half of them with me. I don't take a cut from her fee or anything because I fully think that they deserve it. So even though that bridal party is eight people, I'm only getting paid for four. So that's also why I didn't have a high income either because I was pretty much cutting all of my weddings in half. As compared to the previous year where I took like eight and nine person and even 10 person bridal parties on my own. When I look back though, I was like, you know what? I'm able to support myself off of the amount that I made last year. So why am I stressing myself out about this? Because overall, I was happier. I overall was less stressed because I didn't have as many people to take every single time. I was also happier too because I got to actually take vacations last year and had time to spend with people. I had more time to spend with my friends. I had more time to spend with my husband. Like my overall happiness was better last year and I still profited. So it's like, why am I beating myself up about this? That's also the reason why sometimes Sometimes you have to deep dive into why things are happening or why things didn't happen because sometimes you don't think about those things. I still wanna see my business profit. Like I would still like to make like about $10,000 more than I made last year. But if I don't make that much, then fine. Again, I can survive off of what I have right now. I am going to physically try to take as many people in a bridal party as I possibly can by myself this year. But if it is closer to nine or 10, I'm gonna hire a secondary artist. After eight people, I'm pretty much done. Like I don't wanna take any more people after that. Like nine's pushing it and then 10's really pushing it. And I was recently watching Makeup by McKenna's videos and I know she watches my channel so if you do hi McKenna she's been a really great resource on YouTube she's been doing YouTube for longer than I have like way longer than I have she was one of the first content creators that I found that actually produced makeup artist content like I do if you guys like my content you'll like hers too so check her out if you guys have not already I'll link her channel down below I love her content and she recently came out with like a get ready with me style video she said going forward she was mainly not focused on the amount of weddings that she had or the amount of clients that she had but the quality as opposed to the quantity and I felt like that was a really really good topic to talk about. Before I move on, I'm doing my lips really quickly. I'm going in with this very, very small Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Liner. If something gets down to the small guys, you know it's your favorite. This one is in the shade Pillow Talk Medium, but it's like the perfect shade for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just line this really quickly. And I overline them a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. Then for the lipstick, I'm going in with this Maracuja Juicy Lipstick by Tarte. This is what this looks like. And this is a lighter shade. It's in the shade Rose. And I would say it's like a satin kind of lipstick but it goes perfect with this lip liner. If I were to use this alone though, I think it's a little bit too light for me. And then I'm gonna top everything off with this Merit Beauty Shade Slick Tinted Lip Oil. And this is in the shade Taupe. This is like my absolute favorite color of all the tinted lip oils that they have, by the way. I love lip oils because they're so hydrating and they're not as sticky as lip glosses. 
in the Midwest, at least where I live, I'm almost struggling to get people to see the value of a makeup artist. If you pay a higher cost for somebody, then they're most likely going to produce better results because that kind of just happens. Like you pay for what you get. You're not going to get a super, super good makeup artist at the same cost as a beginner makeup artist because they're gonna charge what they're worth, you know? But for those people who do hire me, those clients that I'm getting are clients that definitely understand the value of makeup. And overall, your vibe's just going to be better with them. Like you're going to bond with them because they truly appreciate you as a makeup artist. And I vibe with every single one of my clients that I have had so far. And the other thing that McKenna brought up is that a lot of artists, specifically bridal makeup artists, kind of almost treat weddings like an assembly line or something out of a factory. You pretty much do almost the same looks or if not very similar looks on almost every single person. You maybe grab for the same products every single time. And it sort of is like an assembly line process sometimes. So like you're just kind of trying to get through as many people as you possibly can. You're really not spending time getting to know that person or getting to know their skin or maybe even what look they're looking for. You're not producing the best results that you possibly can and usually you're not giving yourself enough time to do that either. A lot of the time people are just focused on the amount of people that they can take but really you should be focused on the quality that you're producing. Because I personally know that my average makeup application is about 45 minutes to like an hour and I have done makeup looks in 35 minutes before, but by no means have they turned out the same as the people that have given me a full 45 minutes to work on them. Instead, by upcharging for your services a little bit more, giving yourself more time to work, you're going to produce better results and in turn, that client will see why they paid a top dollar for you rather than somebody else who probably was doing an assembly line sort of situation and just produced half-ass work. And over time, that reputation will heavily affect you as a business owner and help you get more clientele and help you get your ideal clientele. Everybody's like, okay, I just need to get as many clients as I possibly can because I wanna make the most money that I can. But just if you upcharge for your services and charge a little bit more, like you can take like half the amount of people but still make the same amount of money. That is pretty much all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this Get Ready With Me. I hope you guys enjoyed trying out some new products. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything, leave those down below. Definitely go ahead and like the video if you haven't already. And if you guys have not subscribed to my channel, what are you guys doing? Go ahead and subscribe. And as always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.